Hi, this is Paul again. Now I've got something else to show you. I made another important discovery when I was doing some more research on this nine band system. And I've decided to call it the DNA gyro processor. Okay, so let's show you what I've got. I showed in my last video that A, B and Z DNA seem to split into just four sections. It was found by using the green 60 to start and then the 75.4, the cyan at 44.6 and ending up with the red. Everything seemed to work out okay. On the left you can see 10 vectors running from 0 to 9. These are the colored vectors used in the 9 bends in my last video. But this 1 to 9 sequence is actually in 3 groups. And these groups are 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8 and 3, 6, 9 just like on the keyboard. Tesla said if only people knew the importance of 3, 6, 9. It took quite a while to figure all these bends out. If you look in front of you this is the vector arrangement that I used. I'm showing a strip of colors 1 to 5. So I guess this should be the standard color arrangement, just like the time zone in Greenwich. And this is from Montreal. Okay, let's make a start with the five cube arrangement and the dodeca by itself. We'll start by showing a yellow angle strip to the first vector. This angle is 70.529 degrees. We'll have a quick look at the geometry. The points of the cubes will make a sphere to this diameter. Now we'll take a copy of the yellow cube and turn it into a red and then rotate it 75.4 on the red and yellow axes. This angle is bigger than the 70 because it rotates around a smaller circle. This circle is 20.9 latitude, the same as Yucatan. This chord I show is exactly the same length as the edge of a cube and I show a black chord a little bit shorter. We'll make the shorter length A and the longer length B. Now if we divide A, which is 185.4, by length B, which is 300, we end up with the exact golden ratio. The red and the yellow cubes now form a golden ratio vector 0. You can see we have another two vectors. These are just one color. So I'm calling these IW vectors, vector in waiting. Now we'll make another copy of the yellow cube. This is a purple tube and it rotates 44.6 and we'll use the axis of vector 1. Notice the purple cube vertices lie in another circle. This circle is latitude 54.75, the same as Durham, England. So this purple cube has just formed another two golden ratio vectors. I figure that the rotating axis vector should always come first. Okay, finally on this group we rotate a green cube this time, 44.6 on the IW3 axis. And notice that the green cube vertices lie on the Durham circle also, from the purple. I think these four moves to get us the 1, 2, 3 tallies up with the four swirls so it looks as if I've done something right. So I think we'll do a check with the four swirls to show you. Okay first of all we start with the green swirl. This is a 60 degree and as you can see she lines up spot on with the yellow and purple vector. We'll rotate it back again and bring the blue one in and this blue swirl will take the bend and it lined up perfectly to the red and purple vector number two. Okay, we'll bend the blue one back again and now we'll bring the cyan swirl in. But this one doesn't go nowhere. As you can see that green vector isn't a golden ratio vector. Okay, so finally on this swirl set we can bring in the red swirl. And she lines up perfectly with the green and purple vector in the back number 3. As you see this vector is about 240 degrees around the dodeca is on the other side. And this vector number 3 comes off the Durham circle, as I showed earlier. Okay, now we can go back to the rest of that sequence. I'm taking the animation from the start again. 
and I'm leaving the rings out. So if I say, mention the Yucatan or the Durham, you know what I'm talking about. So if you look on the Yucatan, I now show two green vectors in waiting. Now we'll take a copy of the yellow arc strip and rotate it 120 around the Yucatan. And we have now created golden ratio vector 4. Now we'll make a copy of the red arc strip and rotate it 120 degrees. And now we've created golden ratio vector 5. Okay, now's the time for the cyan cube. And it rotates 44.6 off the green cube. And it forms a new axis and golden ratio vector number 6. And this lies on the Durham ring. So this completes another three bend vectors. So I think we'll give these another four swirl checks. The 60 degree green swirl on four looks good. And the 75.4 blue swirl looks good on number five. The both being on the Yucatan ring. And the 60 degree red looks good. And this makes number six on the Durham line. Okay, so now we can go back and do our last three bends. The next two will be on the Yucatan round the back end, so I'm going to have to rotate it, and we'll give it a bit of a tilt. Now we'll copy and rotate the yellow arc strip 120 degrees, and that will give us number seven. And we'll do the same with the red, and we'll rotate this for 120 degrees, and that will give us number eight. And seven and eight are both on the Yucatan. And now our final bend is achieved by rotating a copy of the purple arc strip 120 degrees and this will give us number nine three six and nine are always found on the durham okay so now we can bring the swirls back and check these last three bends okay green is good on the seven bend and now we'll check the blue swirl on number eight bend and that looks good also so finally we have one swirl left and that is the red one and we're going to see the bend on number nine and that one is good also. So you have seen that the zero to nine processor has worked out perfectly to the nine bend system that I showed in my last video. So I hope I made it clear how this processor goes together. I realize that most scholars like to see things done in two dimension on paper, but I'm very sorry about that. But to make things easier to understand, I'm going to rotate everything around so that we're looking down at the top. So we'll start the animation again, and then we will start with one and work our way until we get to nine. I think you can have a better view this way. Now if you study the way these vectors go, if you pick any three, you will find at least one long edge, which is the len length of the side of the cube, and then the short length. And this is always a golden ratio. And each vector is made up of two cubes, and one cube is rotated to be golden ratio to the other. So that's why I call them golden ratio vectors. They're just full of golden ratio. Now I'm going to show you the bottom set of vectors. These use the same process as the top, but they're exactly opposite. And the movement goes in the opposite direction. This is very much like the water running clockwise in the northern hemisphere and anti-clockwise in the southern hemisphere. There might be a reason for this. Maybe some physicist can tell us why. So now you can see how these five cubes are giving you vectors in a perfect sequence from one to nine. And you can see that these cubes has given you a perfect sequence to match up with the nine bends of the DNA as I showed in the last video. And what I'm showing you now is that they match up to any of the vectors going in, the 20 vectors. And it gives this nine rotation for every one of them in perfect order. And the colors that rotate in this sequence can be changed by simply changing the order of the five cube colors. So anybody can see that the vectors can keep the colors for each of the orientations. I think this is amazing. I have more stuff to show you about these discoveries, 
but I think I'm going to go to part two with another video. I realize the fractals I show to produce these videos have never been mentioned by any university in the last four years. I guess order can never be accepted to take over from chaos. It's obvious the many discoveries that I've made with perfect order is of no importance to these people. Hopefully there'll be a good home for my discoveries in some part of the world. So hopefully I'll try to get another video out with the other stuff I want to show you. So this is Paul saying bye for now.